Hi, this is Kevin Deal. Today we're going to talk about the Prima Luna Evo 200 power amp. I am thrilled to do this video. I was prompted by a phone conversation with a customer uh, who had bought a Prima Luna. This guy was really, really smart. He was building a system and he said, no, I wanted to build my forever system. I didn't want to go through the get rid of stuff and upgrade and get rid of stuff and upgrade thing. And I wanted to do it once and do it right. He first determined what speakers he likes. And that's a smart way to do it. And then he knew that he wanted tubes, but he, and he did a lot of research on that. So what he did is he got the speakers that he likes. Then he bought a streamer that had a decent volume control and a Primo and a power amp because Primo and a power amps are switchable from stereo to mono. And when you switch them from stereo to mono, the sound quality improves greatly. And I'm going to talk about that in just a moment, right? So he bought one amp, then he bought a second amp, then he just got the preamp and he's getting a phono stage and a turntable. And over a period of time, he is building something. I mean, that's the whole thing with Primlin, right? You see some other brands and they do what they call their upgrades and their Mark II and their this and their that. And, you know, I mean, just to do a, a simple upgrade cost on their amplifier costs more than one of these amplifiers in its entirety. And it seems like there's like this hamster wheel thing over and over and over again, taking money out of your pocket. And Prima Luna has never been that way. If you've got a Prima Luna that was made back in 2003, a Prologue one, that amplifier is worth more today than what it sold retail for back then. All Prima Luna products are, have an intrinsic value to them. And we don't want people to be upgrading all the time. You know, we want people to get something and to keep it. We don't have a problem with kind of putting ourselves out of business in that way. And I'm being honest when I say that. Purchase of a lifetime. Parts and engineering, parts and engineering. I'm gonna break it down for you because I'm gonna show you something that a lot of people don't do. I'm gonna show you the guts of it and what makes it unique. But for the moment, let's look at this amp. Four EL34s, but you can run any tube you want. We're gonna talk about that. Four 12 AU7s, uh, five coats of hand rub finish, this beautiful cage, and it's like, oh my God. But let's look on the inside. You know, the Evolution series is an upgrade of the older series. It's a refinement of a bunch of little itty bitty things from the power supply to the, the metal work to uh, uh, a doomsday fuse on the side, even the feet. I mean, Herman Van den Dungen, this guy is something, right? He knows that rubber feet are great because you need them to absorb vibration and you don't want to scratch your uh, shells, so on and so forth. But rubber can adhere to certain types of finishes. So they put a, a special slip pad on the bottom of the feet, right? Who does that? Who does, Prima Luna does that. Now let's look inside. This is a nice bottom and oh my God. See, I, I didn't even want to look at it until I, it was like almost like I'm undressing it in a way, right? But let's look inside here. Oh my God. So look, let me just break a couple things down that might be a little bit propeller head, okay? The 12 AU7s that are in the front up here, they're all in ceramic tube sockets. They're not on a printed circuit board because Primalina has always been about point to point wiring. The entire signal path is point to point wiring. All the tubes are hand wired. But what they did with this unit, as they have done in all Prima Lunas, is they use something that's called an elevated DC supply. Some amplifiers are gonna use an AC filament supply, and that is okay. But what Prima Luna has been about is dropping the noise floor, dropping the noise floor, dropping the noise floor. Don't try to power your way to good sound. Drop the noise. And that's what an elevated DC supply will do for you. But it's a lot more expensive because you're going to, it's, trust me, it's more expensive. I'm not going to go any further than that. Now let's look at the power supply in its entirety. See these big Nichicon capacitors here and this transformer? That's called a pie circuit. Again, go look at competitive products and it's gonna be very rare to see something like that. That means you got a big Nichicon and then a choke and then another big Nichicon. That's how you get, a, get rid of low frequency noise and, and, and ripple and all of that nasty, nasty stuff that can get in the signal path. But then they added an additional uh, capacitor right here. 
going between the two big Nichicons. That one is called a snubber capacitor, and its job is to get rid of high frequency hash. So comparing this to uh, a $5,000 amp that I talked about in another video not long ago, that product at $5,000 had a single capacitor in the power supply, one. And it was about a $9 cap, and it was just bolted to the printed circuit board. These are about $30 each, plus the snubber cap, plus the choke transformer. Many, many times more expensive, not mounted to a printed circuit board, but it is built to last a lifetime. Now let's talk about the power transformer really quick. Prima Luna has always been proud of using toroidal power transformers. We'll show you a picture of one right now. The beauty of a toroid is they look like a donut and they don't radiate EMI out of the core of the donut, or at least not much, you know. They can still radiate a little bit. But what Prima Luna did to make sure that nothing sneaks out is they put it into a can. Uh, boom. This is what's called, this is the transformer from this amp, right? It's big, it's a toroid and it's badass. And it is mounted in this uh, special material, which is there to shield it, and it's mounted in a non-microphonic resin. The reason is twofold. Number one, it's an expensive part. This is the most expensive part in any amplifier, and that's why manufacturers want to cheap out. Number two, uh, and you want to protect it because it's so expensive. The other reason you want to pot it is to reduce mechanical hum because you've heard it probably before somewhere in your system, power transformers can have mechanical hum and they wanna reduce that. All the pre power transformers are designed and wound in house. Oh my God, that's so badass. Now let's talk about the output transformers. We New people, people that are new to tubes, they, they make this common mistake all the time. They go, oh, I need 100 watts. Why do you need 100 watts? Well, because my receiver and I had an Aragon amp and it was, you know. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. You can have a 500 watt tube amplifier and have horrible bass response. And I've heard them before, by the way. I've heard very powerful tube amps with crappy bass. The reason is power has nothing to do with dynamics. It has nothing to do with bass response. In a tube amplifier, purely, what is going to give you bass is bandwidth. And when you talk about bandwidth, you're talking about something called an output transformer. And output transformers are half uh, engineering and they're half art. Right, I mean, they're almost like magic. And Prima Luna has designed their own forever. They wind them in-house and they are famous for their bandwidth. But not just that, I mean, that's an output transformer. There's two of them in here. And I'm gonna explain what happens when you monoblock this amp because it is really, really badass. This output transformer, again, is potted. And this output transformer has three different speaker taps on it. What's important about that? Some amplifiers only have one speaker tap, and that's not a bad way to go. There's plenty of companies that do it. That means you're gonna average that tap at maybe five and a half ohms, something like that, and then it's gonna have to work well with a broad range of speakers. It could be speakers that are two ohms, could be speakers that are 16 ohms. Prima Luna integrated amps have a four ohm tap and an eight ohm tap. So you have a greater chance of getting closer to the true and average impedance of the speaker. When a speaker says it is eight ohms, it is never eight ohms, right? It may well sound better on the four ohm tap. So never make that mistake. You gotta try the different taps and use the one that sounds best. It will be very, very apparent to you. But on the Prima Luna power amplifiers, they have three different speaker taps. That's more expensive to do. It's a, uh, an engineering feat, but it is the best way to do it. So this amplifier has a four ohm tap, an eight ohm tap, and a 16 ohm tap. You're gonna use the one that sounds best. Even if you think your speaker is a four ohm speaker, you wanna try that 16 ohm tap because I've seen plenty of surprises over the years where you're gonna end up using something you don't think is gonna be appropriate. Now, 
if you run a Prima Luna amplifier in mono, something magical happens, and that is this. The output impedance drops. The noise drops another level. You are gonna be running with what's called dual output transformers. So one of those transformers is for the negative leg, the other transformer is for the positive leg, and it is badass. And it's not something that is typical in tube amplification. There's not a lot of products that will do something like that, but it is bitching. And so you're gonna end up with, instead of a four, eight, and 16 ohm tap, they're gonna change. They're gonna become a two, four, and eight. And that can be really, really great for you crazy people that have ribbons and crazy electrostats and all that, or some of the other bonkers stuff that has been made uh, over the years. Let's talk about that power thing and people thinking they need 100 watts in a tube amp. If you draw more power out of this tube, there is no doubt it will have a shorter life. And we have to explain that to people that maybe you don't want to run that tube really hard because you're going to have more shorts. You can't beat the system. There's no magic way to get more power out of a tube. Okay, there's no magic way. So if you've got a pair of KT120s and it's 100 watts per channel, you're gonna do that by running 585 or 600 volts to the plates of the tube. They're gonna have a shorter life. There is no way around it. You put a pair of KT120s in a Prima Luna or maybe a pair of KT150s, I'm telling you right now, they may well live longer than you do. I had an H, I had a, uh, oh, I had an HP power amp at my old house in Upland, because you guys know I moved. And I was running that system a lot in my bedroom, and I was running KT-150s, and it was amazing, and I had it there for well over five years, right? I put a new system into my new house, and I had those tubes in a drawer. Magazine reviewer wanted to borrow some for his review of the Evo 400 integrated that's in Stereophile right now. And I checked the tubes and after five years, they tested at 90% of new. And indeed that reviewer bought them from me and he's gonna get many, 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 many years out of them. We now know after so many years of doing what we said we would do, running tubes at their minimum, that it would extend life, and it has now been verified. We were hoping it would work that way, but it has worked that way beyond our wildest dream. But listen to me, we did something back in 2003 in an effort to extend tube life that no one else has done, and that is we invented adaptive auto bias. So stay with me for just a moment, please. This is the adaptive auto bias board. Its job is to look at each one of these tubes and keep it in its perfect operating position and to reduce distortion by over 50%. The problem with tubes is this. They don't age evenly. There's companies that have made auto bias in the past, but all they did was adjust that bias at a fixed setting uh, and only when the tube is idling. What happens when the tubes age? What happens when the tubes aren't idling and you're pressing on the gas? Adaptive auto bias in very, very simple terms without getting too propeller head is like going from four carburetors here that you have to adjust to having fuel injection. It makes everything better and it makes things more economical. It extends the usable life of tubes. If this tube gets droopy and it starts to get a little wonky when you're turning the music up, Adaptive Auto Bias is gonna do everything that it can to make sure that you don't hear the effects of that. But there is more to it. If you have a tube short, and if you buy a tube amp, there's no getting around that. You're gonna have a tube short, okay? It's not a big deal. In some amplifiers, you're gonna replace a fuse. In other amplifiers, you're gonna to have to send it to the shop because they don't believe in fuses. They believe in what's called a sacrificial resistor, which I think is like the dumbest thing ever. I hate that because it really causes, that's why tube amps have a bad reputation is because of dumb ideas like that. That means that if you have a tube short, you have to bring it to the shop or get a soldering iron out and figure out which one's bad. 
not in a Prima Luna. The moment that there is a tube problem, there's a relay right here on the adaptive auto bias board. It's gonna open up to cut off all the power to the tubes and protect all of these expensive parts. A little red LED lights up in front of the bad tube. You simply turn the amp off, pull out the tube, plug in another tube. It doesn't even have to be the right tube. At the Consumer Electronics Show, at shows all the shows that we've gone to, I'll take a Prima Luna and I'll run four different tubes in the amp and it'll sound great. I will purposely do the wrong thing and put in other tubes that are compatible, but not the same. EL34, KT88, KT120, KT150, and it'll sound great. That's the engineering power of Prima Luna. Look, I mean, the guy that designed this was the chief engineer for Goldman in Switzerland, right? Most people have never even seen a piece of Goldman uh, because they're so expensive. That's what Prima Luna is about. Parts and engineering, not this fairy dust. Oh my God, look at the new metal work that they have. The, the face plate has been kind of uh, refined just a little bit. I mean, I don't know what to say. Oh, and one last thing. I want you to take a close up shot. When you're done here, I want you to go to the Prima Luna USA website. There's a, a page there that is called, um, oh my God, important topics or something like that critical topics, go there and learn about this. And I want you to look at how the tube sockets are all done. Power tubes should not be mounted to a tube, uh, to a printed circuit board. Look at the way we do these uh, sockets, that these chimneys they have and four bolts holding them onto the chassis. I mean, it's just textbook. Look, don't take my word for any of this. Don't take my word for any of this. Hold me to task. Do your own due diligence. Don't buy a damn thing from anybody without going to Google Images and look to see what is inside the box. You can find pictures out there to, and you don't have to be an engineer to figure this out. Contact us at Prima Luna, but make sure that you support your local dealer. Every town is better off with a record store and a hi-fi store. That's what we think here. All right. Prima Luna is about getting you something that will last a lifetime, and that's why we use that tagline. It is Music Illuminated. Thank you.